Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel. It is Carabao Cup semi-final second leg day. Spurs away. Chelsea can make it into another major final under Thomas Tuchel. If you're excited for tonight's game, be sure to hit the like button on today's video. If we can get 2,000 likes before kickoff, I'll be a very happy man. And subscribe to GBFC if you are new around here and haven't already done so. We're back in business now. It is game day today. It is a 3.45 for me, kickoff, which is 7.45 for you lot in the UK and everywhere else around the world, I'm sorry, but... You're gonna have to do the mathematics for yourself. However, Chelsea have a 2-0 lead. It's as if we are at half-time and we're 2-0 up against Spurs and we're away from home, but the only issue is we've got 90 minutes to play. I've always kind of used that analogy of, like, it's half-time in a two-legged cup tie, but then when you actually think about it, it's like... Half time normally means you're 45 minutes away from victory. In this case, we got to go to Spurs, put in a big 90 minutes here, away from home. Spurs at home have been pretty good recently. I think the last time that Chelsea won a League Cup game away at Tottenham was in 1991, and we won that 3-0. So if we can win 3-0 again tonight, then I'll be absolutely over the moon. I think Chelsea and Thomas Tuchel are going to field a strong team. The starting 11 that I've picked have gone with a 3-4-1-2 formation. And I think that we will actually go out there tonight and get a good result. I've been impressed with our recent performances. Yeah, it was Chesterfield, National League North side at the weekend. No disrespect, but we should have always won that game and we should have always scored at least five goals, realistically, in that kind of tie. But in the first leg, Spurs did not have a sniff. I think it will be a bit different tonight because they're going to be playing at home. There's going to be pressure from the crowd. Antonio Conte is going to have the backing of the crowd this time as opposed to kind of being in the cauldron that was Stamford Bridge in that first leg. So Spurs are going to have to try and play. When they came to Chelsea, I don't think I've ever seen a Spurs team look so weak, look so void of ideas, struggling. The substitutions didn't help them. They had a period of like five or six minutes at the beginning of the first half where they looked semi-threatening in a semi-final, which is a mad thing to think about. Antonio Conte, he's got a lot of work to do. There's been a bit of a falling out in the last week or so with Tangai and Dombele after he was booed. I've always thought that he is one of Spurs' most dangerous players, particularly when he plays against Chelsea. No Hyungmin Son. He will also be out for the Premier League game too. Chelsea's still got to worry about Harry Kane but I think we should have enough to get the job done tonight. I've gone with a very, very strong starting 11. And without any further ado, we are going to begin building my Chelsea team tonight to go to Spurs and make it to a major final. I don't know about you guys, but Carabao Cup or not, I'm absolutely gassed for this game. I'm so excited for it. The game against Chesterfield at the weekend was kind of difficult for me to get excited about because I had such a busy weekend of plans that the football, it was kind of like I just needed to sit there on my phone in a corner somewhere watching the game, which is almost what it was like. But we begin with Kepa Ariza Balaga in goal today for Chelsea. Bettinelli came in against Chesterfield. Was good to see him make his debut. Edouard Mendy's at the AFCON, so Kepa is the number one goalkeeper. He's had a good run in this competition this year. I hope that it doesn't go down to penalties, because if it goes to penalties, it means that Chelsea were beaten 2-0 in normal time, which is not ideal. It's not the result you want. We've got a 2-0 lead, and I think Kepa is a decent goalkeeper to keep us in that position. We move into a central back three, and I've gone very strong for this game today. I was thinking, do we throw Malang Sar in there again? He's looking good recently. West Ham are reportedly interested in him. Chelsea might be thinking a game against Spurs in a semi-final. It's a great opportunity to put Malang Sar in the shop window. However, Unless we're going to invest in a centre-back this January, I really hope that any talks of any Chelsea players, particularly defenders, wing-backs, whatever, anybody being in the shop window at this moment in time seriously concerns me. But I haven't gone with Malang Sarr. I've gone with Aspi, Christensen and Tony Rudiger. This is a very, very strong back line. We need the experience that we have in there with Rudiger, Aspi. We've done it away at Spurs before. We've had big wins away at Tottenham recently. We've done very well in recent fixtures against Spurs. We're unbeaten in the last five, I think, or maybe it's even six, but we've definitely not lost in the last five games. Aspi, Christensen in the middle, and Tony Rudiger. Every time we talk about these centre-backs at the moment, there is always this thing in the back of my head thinking, contract situations, is it going to get the better of them? 
But I think Thomas Tuchel and the way that he's managed this team, the way that he's spoken about the situations regarding the contracts of Rudy, Christensen, P Silver also before we actually signed that extension. Thomas Tuchel has managed this incredibly well. As it stands right now, all of these three centre-backs that I've picked today are actually able to talk to other clubs. They're able to make pre-agreements for the signing in the summer, but the fact that none of them at the moment, it seems, have actually said, I'm leaving Chelsea, I simply think it's a case of they all want to stay. It's just whether the offer from Chelsea is up to the kind of level that they would want knowing that all three of them are in a position where Aspi, he's got probably one more big contract left in him from another club. Christensen is young, but as a Champions League winner, he's in a very good bargaining position right now. And Tony Rudiger has been one of the best centre-backs in Europe this season. So he's got bargaining power too. But we move into the wing-backs. I put Christian Pulisic in right wing-back today. No Reese James, of course. We have no Chalaba in centre-back, so Aspie's got to be there. I'm going for a strong team. Callum Hudson-Odoi, Christian Pulisic. I think on the right-hand side, I'd go with Pulisic. He's been getting a lot more minutes recently. I know it's not in the position that we all want to see him in. And trust me, if we didn't have this injury crisis, there's absolutely no way I would be putting Christian Pulisic in the right-wing-back position. I'd either be using him as a super sub, which he's been brilliant for, or starting him on the left-hand side. Pulisic on the right, Marcus Alonso on the left. It'll be interesting to see if Chelsea do manage to bring Emerson back to the club. Will Alonso still be the first choice? Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments below. The central midfield partnership. N'Golo Kante is back. He's been in training, but I don't think he's going to be risked for this game. I think Tuchel will look at the game in the Premier League at the weekend and think that's the one we're going to start in Golo Kante in. So I've gone with Jorginho and Mateo Kovacic. Mateo Kovacic, I still haven't got that goal he scored against Liverpool out of my head. It was absolutely stupendously good and I'm absolutely glad that he is back fit and ready to be performing in this Chelsea team on a consistent basis. He's been one of our best players this season. I think Thomas Tuchel has moulded him into such a creative player. Before... You were looking at Kovacic's game and you're thinking, goals, assists, they're lacking. He scored a wonder goal. He's been getting lots of assists for Chelsea this season. I would argue that he's even more important now than Jorginho is in this team. Despite Jorginho's goals from the penalty spot, Jorginho is still that anchor man. The guy that I always said was like the cog in the Chelsea team. Jorginho still is that guy, but Mateo Kovacic is the key man in that midfield for me today. Moving into the one in the 3-4-1-2, Mason Mount is going to play behind two strikers today. I think what I like about the 3-4-1-2 is that it gives Chelsea the ability to play with two strikers, but then with Timo Werner up top alongside Lukaku, it gives us that ability to move it onto the wings. Mason Mount can go out wide. Timo Werner goes out wide, allowing Lukaku to be that focal point in the centre position for Chelsea. But I've lined it up today as a 3-4-1-2 with Mason Mount playing behind both Timo Werner and Romelu Lukaku as strikers. When we think back to last season in the Carabao Cup, Timo Werner did manage to score. Or maybe it was the season before. I can't remember which one was which now. The football win world has just been absolutely mind-blowing for me in terms of like what happened when, what happened here, what happened there. I've been in Bali for the whole bloody thing. So it's not like I went to the game and can say, yeah, that was that season. That was this one that Timo Werner does have an away goal against Spurs in the Carabao Cup. This Chelsea team that is on the screen right now, I absolutely back to go and get a result tonight against Spurs. I think it's going to be an open game. Spurs have got to go for it. Chelsea, they've been good defensively on the whole this season, but we had a bad patch. Do I think we're going to come unstuck today? Maybe, simply because Spurs are just going to be going at it. But at the same time... I back us to get a few goals too. So my school prediction is Spurs 2, Chelsea 2. Seeing us progress 4-2 on aggregate in the Carabao Cup. Meeting Liverpool or Arsenal in the Carabao Cup final. I'm buzzing for this game tonight. Six things we learn is going to be out immediately after the game. No excuses for this one. I've got no parties, got nothing else going on or no other commitments to be attending to. So six things we learn will be out immediately after the game. Let me know your Chelsea starting 11s in the comments down below. And also your score predictions. Will we be in that Carabao Cup final against Arsenal or Liverpool? 
Let me know down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you after the game. Come on, you blues.